Hi, this is Timco Travels and today we are in Venice. Venice. One of the most visited tourist destinations in the world, the city of Venice is an archipelago of islands in the lagoon between the Po and the Piave rivers in northeastern Italy. The centre of a booming republic based on trade for over a millennia, the historic city is a time capsule where cars do not exist and the only way to get around is by boat. Question number one. Mm -hmm. How many islands make up Venice? Um, quite a few. Um, I'm gonna say about 40. Oh, wrong answer. Much more than that. Okay. 118. 118 islands. islands. Indeed. Quite a big place. <laughs> The city's most famous monuments are all crowded around St. Mars Square. While fairly busy with tourists, you can easily visit the monuments without too much queuing, so we suggest heading up the Campanile first to get a bird's eye view of the city. With the winding streets, canals and ancient roofs spread out beneath you, it feels like you're looking out on the largest museum in the world. I felt like a 15th century merchant. And I felt like a judge. What a horrible view. Just across the square is the 11th century St. Mark's Basilica, which is probably the finest example of Italo-Byzantine architecture ever built. With its numerous columns and domes, the inside is gilt with gold mosaics, literally from floor to ceiling to dome, which took centuries to create, and is why it's known as the Chiesa d'Oro, the Church of Gold. In the basilica, the guards kept shouting at me to not take photographs, but I just kept taking photos because I'm crazy like that. I'm such a rebel. Question number two. Mm -hmm. How many people live in Venice? I would imagine there's a lot more tourists than there are people, uh, but it's still a relatively big city, so I'm going to say about 100,000. Oh, incorrect again. It's 260,000 overall, mm -hmm. but 55,000 people live on the historical Venice. Oh, so most people live on the mainland? Indeed. Just next door is the Doge's Palace, which is a vast ornate structure that served as the centre of Venetian power for centuries. Beginning in 1340, the structure was extended and redecorated numerous times over the centuries and was seen basically as a small Maritime Republic showroom in which it could show off to the tradesmen and emissaries visiting from all over the world. Inside are the Doge's personal apartments and the institutional chambers, all of which are like art galleries whose paintings have been plastered directly onto the walls and ceilings. In every millimetre of available space. I think I'm going to use the Doge's palace as inspiration for the remodelling of our house. I'd rather we fashion it after Versailles. Who do you think would win in a fight? Louis XIV or the Doge? Uh, Louis XIV, obviously, although who even was a Doge? Jeremy, um, I've got something to tell you. Um, something that I've been wanting to talk to you about for a long time. Um, and I'm sorry that I haven't told you sooner, but I am the Doge. Ah, ok, quindi posso, possiamo parlare in italiano? Si. <laughs> tu sei un cazzo, no? See? <laughs> what does that mean? You're a doge. <laughs> and you said yes. <laughs> but I'm still the doge. This is mine. Mm. I own this. This is my. Oh, great. Great. So let's new move pad. in. Yeah. Let's move in. This is going to be our bedroom. In 
included in your trip is a visit to the palace dungeon, which you can access via the world famous Bridge of Sighs. Prisoners would be taken across from the court inside the palace, and their final view of Venice before their imprisonment would be through the narrow stone windows, and they'd sigh. Hence the name. Clever. I see what they did there. <sighs> <sighs> Question number three. In what year did Venice gain its independence? Um, well, it was Napoleon that was responsible for it, so I'm going to guess for 1799. That's incorrect, I'm afraid it's 1797. Oh, so very close. close. Very close. But wrong, though. Do I get half a point for being so close? Not incorrect. No. While its monuments are pretty special, the best thing about this city is the city itself, with all of its beautiful architecture crammed onto every available inch of space. The best views come from boats, which can range from the moderately priced to the extortionately expensive. The Vaporetto, a water bus, will take you up and down the Grand Canal, which slices the city in half, and we would suggest buying a travel card, which cover all your trips around the city. As well as trips to the outlying islands. Cost 20 euros for a day, 30 for two, 40 for three, or 60 for a full week. But it's worth it, if just for the view of travelling under the Rialto Bridge. And of course, if you feel like I'm a bit more, there's always a gondola. Would you like it if I sang to you like a gondolier? I don't think you can sing like a gondolier. Give me Cornetto, give it to me. No, give up. All over the city, you'll see gondoliers stood with their moored gondolas, waiting to take tourists out on this once in a lifetime experience. It cost 80 euros for a 30 minute ride, but that rises to 120 euros at night. And this is a fixed price for all gondoliers across the city. We opted not to do it because Venice is beautiful enough that we definitely want to come back when we're older and richer. By which time I intend not to just hire a gondola, but buy one. We'll get loads of views out of it on the Manchester canals for sure. Do I look manly? No. Now you do. Thanks. Question number four. Yesterday we went to visit the Doge's Palace, mm -hmm. but what exactly is a Doge? Ah, I know this. Um, he is the Chief Magistrate and Leader of the Republic. Um, he is elected, but he stays there for life, but it's not a hereditary thing. Um, so he's essentially like the Leader of the Republic. Kind of a bit like the Pope. Okay, correct. Well done. Beautiful though Venice is, while you're here, it is absolutely worth using your Vaporetto Pass to go and visit the outlying islands of Murano and Burano. These small islands are crowded with technical and vibrantly painted houses, all perched on the edge of canals. The communities living there are famous for their world-renowned glass manufacture. And you can buy their work straight from the house of a craftsman who made it. Question number five. Unfortunately, Venice is sinking by its foundation, but by how much each year? I would say that it's not an enormous amount, um, otherwise it would have sunk ages ago. So I'm going to say like a centimetre? Oh no, much smaller than that. By one or two millimetres, uh. actually. Venice is an amazing city that feels like a living and breathing museum. 
Yes, it's busy, but it will still take your breath away that something so beautiful can actually exist, unspoiled by the modernization of the 21st century. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and to follow us on Instagram at Through Macro KIs. And be sure to tune in next time when we will be in Milan and the Italian Lakes. Until next time, folks. Ciao.